This is Hiram, Chelsea fan, and make sure you guys press record at this time, you idiots. You're watching the DU football show. Yeah. Good he, note. He, he, he had a bad day. <laughs> they, they did press record. He had a really good midweek, and then the weekend, no so good. <laughs> it's not going well so far. Yeah. Yet somehow you realize they have backdoored their way into the fucking top 10. I know. It's the league is that fucking bad this yeah, year absolutely. at spots. It's or just, that good because it's fun to watch. We got deducted eight points and we're still out of the relegation. Let's start the show. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Put you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right day. Fucking Gooner Graham, smoke of a lord, look straight and short, Sam Graham, Sam Graham, fucking United, fucking United, Hello and welcome to the DU Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me, my co-host, the man running on fumes, Mr. Samuel Graham. How we doing? I'm running on adrenaline <clears throat> and coffee. <laughs> and coffee. Very good. Uh, real quick, I didn't get to say this last week because we didn't do a live stream and everything, so this one is directed directly at... Uh, our good friend Shore Billy, who I know is on the show. I'm going to show him here. See little Mr. Short Arms there? See that? See that? He was man of the match in your fucking game, jackasses. Running around in your little T-Rex uh, costumes and shit. He was fucking man of the goddamn match. No. Yeah, yeah passing out beers and everything, you know? You and, of course, on the ones and twos, producer Mel, how are you doing? Uh, I can still see. I did not look directly into the sun. Oh, very good. So nobody died. Everything's okay? Well, I, I did drive with my uh, with my uh, Eclipse glasses on, and apparently uh, that's not cool. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> there, 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 there's a joke about you being a woman and driving that probably shouldn't be said, but I'll just go ahead and say it anyways. Sam, myself, for work in the wide and spirit industry, and oh, no, we are. We're recording at the DU Public <laughs> House just nice. outside the nation's capital. Mm. Even a pro makes a mistake mm. every once in a while. <laughs> Look at that. You can Mail check us out wherever you get your podcast, and, of course, streaming every single Monday night wherever you get your streaming services and should you want to chat with us there's many ways that you can mr graham tell the good people how they can get in touch sure it is at bluebirddrivingschool.com uh <laughs> <laughs> it's at du football show and all the social medias and du football show at gmail.com to get in touch by very email. very good and you know what graham the beauty is you see i make a mistake it stays in the show right we all make mistakes <laughs> Oh, except for one person who makes mistakes and they magically disappear. Look at her, just pretending. No, she doesn't. He, she doesn't <laughs> bring up the mute button now. She's playing dumb, right? Yeah, uh huh. And that's how exactly how that works. Sam, myself, put work in the wine and spirit industry, and both have a deep passion and love for all things distilled spirits. So, as the red blooded Americans we are, we vow to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. That's right. Still got it, baby. I can get right back in and keep that bus going. <sighs> Mr. Graham, we are on number three. Tell us about tonight's whiskey. Yeah, you're a regular Sandra Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> it's a speed reference yes. for all you younger listeners. <laughs> oh, look at how, oh, oh, there we go. Hey, everybody. Mr. Graham making it's movie a, references. It's a boomer now. <laughs> <laughs> at least I feel like it. Okay, boomer. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, this is number three. We have officially hit the top three now. Uh, this is the Westland Guariana, number eight. Uh, it is 100 proof, should run around 150. Panel rated at 94. It's an American single malt. And Julia Higgins provides you your blurb from the Whiskey Advocate. And this is what she had to say. Westland's Guariana series explores... Oh, why'd they have to do this? Uh, Qu Quercus... Quercus Guariana, an oak species native to the Pacific Northwest, and its influence on whiskey flavor. This is uh, Seattle, Washington-based Westland's eighth Guariana release, uh, and it just keeps getting more graceful. The oak influence is exquisite, coaxing out notes of charcoal grill. The metal part of the charcoal part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't really specify. Uh, Krispy Kreme donut. Uh, free plug. Uh -huh. Come on. Um, honey Nut Cherry. God damn, this, this lady got paid off like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Russ. 
Uh, <laughs> honey Nut Cheerios and a touch of salinity on the nose. A beautifully textured palate melts smoke and sweetness in superb fashion, expressing strawberry jam, burnt sugar, campfire smoke, and chocolate raspberry Ghirardelli square. Ghirardelli, another one. What the fuck is wow. happening right now? I'm reading a commercial out. Uh, <laughs> Maybe to- I do need some more whiskey because I didn't get that. Yeah. Toast and marshmallow. Uh, honey and cinnamon sweetness linger on and on throughout the finish, leaving you eager for another sip of Coca-Cola. It's actually, like she did say that part. Yeah, well, I, I, smelling my glass, I do get. I do actually do specifically get Let's not do it Ghirardelli. over the board, honey. We are having a problem with the dropsies. So let's uh, we're just... We're, that's why I set it on the mat to the side of the board. There. I mean, I get a, a bit... Of some of those things on the nose, I guess the burnt sugar, especially, so, kind of, it's almost creme brulee like, and then with like some sort of roast, hmm. like a, a roasted something. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Gariana Oak um, because we actually work with Gariana Oak too. We do have some uh, some juice that's sitting. Oh, we use oh, it. Hold on, call it by its proper name. <clears throat> Gariana Oak, brought to you by Frito Lay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not bought and sold by the advertisers. Thank you, but we can be. We can. Be. <laughs> yeah, um, I got I'll hate hate for pay. I, do, I, I got a price. Yep. The. <laughs> But but with a Gariana Oak, um, very, very big, very bold flavors. If you were drinking me on this blind, I would swear I was fucking with an Isla. I would really think this is an Isla. Not so much a peat, but it's got that big, big smoke to it. Uh, very rich, full body whiskey. That is for damn sure. Interesting thing about a Gariana Oak tree. It's almost like a, like a mesquite <clears throat> yeah. rather than a peat. Yeah. Because I'm not getting any of the band aid. I'm not right, getting any of the, the citrus that, but, zest, the but, citrus zest, or any of that kind of stuff that you normally would get from an Isla. Yeah, it's more of a barbecue, like a hickory smoke or a mesquite smoke. Yeah, but it's still it it's drinks kind of what Isla I get. To me. Like yeah. I said, on a blind, I would say it was an Isla. Um, now, the interesting thing about a, a Gariana Oak Tree, shout out to uh, my boy uh, Jonathan Harris, who handles education and collaboration with uh, Westward. He was telling me a little bit about the oak this week. Um, that tree can only be harvested to make a barrel when it is hit the deck. You are they protected? Cut, you cannot cut that tree down. Are they protected? Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it has to hit the deck. Oh, that's a hippy dippy northwest. Of <laughs> oh, you got damn right it is. Sorry, Russ. <laughs> Just that's the only way to that's the only way to agree with you is drop the old GD there because <laughs> I needed to say it emphatically. You see, Graham. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, I I'm I'm impressed. Um, it's, it's a big, rich whiskey. It's not normally one that I would go for, yep. but I get why it is where it is. I get why it exists. It's and, quite, it is quite good. It's not one that I would pick up necessarily. And I'm, um, can I be the first to say I'm mm-hmm. not a fan of the packaging? Yeah. Little. It's just like a red stripe. Yeah. <laughs> little, little off, little confusing, it's, a, but it's, but it's a good whiskey. It's not. It's not something I would go grabbing for just because it's not my style, but I know plenty of my friends who love big fuck whiskeys. Yeah, and they would really. I mean, like it, it definitely whiskey. puts hair on your chest, and it, it to yeah. me after that second sip, I'm anxious to see what the ice does to it as well. Yeah. Um, it almost drinks a little hotter than the proof. It does be- because of that smoke. Be it, and it just it lingers, mm-hmm. but that uh, that alcohol burn stays on your tongue for a minute. Mm-hmm. Like uh, if I you, want, I, I'd probably call it one ten, one fifteen. If I had to, if I had to guess, yeah, I'd want this. Uh, but cold, it's only right at a hundred. I'd want this dram on a cold day. Yeah, I would definitely want this dram on. It'd a It'd be cold nice day. around a fire. Yeah, I, so, some of these flavors, though, I don't know necessarily would go with a cigar very well. I tend to agree. Tend to agree. It's, it's almost like, like I said, to me, it's like a barbecuey smoke, mm-hmm. and that doesn't play with smoking yeah also more more importantly too with with this whiskey in case y'all couldn't figure out what i was doing there with this whiskey (laughs) and with um uh my whiskey from last year that's now two american single malts to break the top five that's two craft whiskeys to break the top five but well barrel also is a craft whiskey so starting to break into the top five smaller whiskeys are starting to get recognized like really recognized yeah, and, so and, this and is that, only a good thing in that regards even though honestly it is direct competition to me 
it's only a good thing that that we keep seeing our whiskeys get higher and higher and higher ratings yeah and, and that uh, that makes the government pay attention <clears throat> are yeah. they 100 percent single malt also they don't blend anything else in yeah they're 100 percent single malt as well i say so for for me um I can. I'm I can. sorry. Quickly, for those of you that don't know, American single malt's not a legal category. So if they wanted to blend in some other grain, they could. Yeah. So technically, and still call it that because the government doesn't say they can't. Like like a certain brand that uh, we aren't fans of that has recently come out with a single malt, and it's not a hundred percent malted barley, and it's not made by them because they don't make any of their juice. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder so, who that is. Uh huh. Starts with a B, ends with an R. Um, you know, just you know, nothing. Uh, nothing I'm saying there. Nothing. Nothing <laughs> news. Nothing at all. What else do we got to do, Mister Graham? Always remember to drink responsibly, and uh, please pay attention to a word from our sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a pretty that was decent better. one. That was better. Ooh. That's it. It ain't that. Ooh, not bad at all. It's actually a good round all the way around. You know, the football show brought to you by Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> The b- I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> Resemble or resent? Oh, oh wait, damn. Wait. The bottom of the table saw something we haven't <laughs> seen in a while. Wins. Yeah. Well, not for everyone. Luton Town 2, Bournemouth 1, Tottenham 3, Nottingham Forest 1, Everton 1, Burnley 0. Cherries hit the post twice and completely dominate in the first half. Yes, they did. Yeah, as we're passing out notes here. This is weird. Yeah? I need those back. These Mm. got cut off for some reason. There you go. They had a little paper jam there. There you go. Figure out what you need. You'll be all right. Very strange. Here we go. All right, I got it. uh, Okay. Hey, hey, Graham. All right, leave me back in. (laughs) Leave me back in. (laughs) Cherries hit the post twice and completely dominate in the first half, but can't score. Yes. Uh, that happened actually a couple of times this weekend to a fair few teams. Uh, that the yeah. first half was fairly impotent, yeah, uh, and the the rest of the game turned out a little bit better for them. Yeah, um, a little bit better for them. Uh, in this case, it obviously didn't because Luton stormed back and uh, and played very very well. Um, obviously, with the roar of their own fans behind them. I would say it did feel like it was going to be uh, Marcus Travener that was going to score. Travernia, cons- yeah, Travernia, especially considering he hit the post twice in the first I know. half. You and were just it, like, there was another. Uh, that's another theme of the weekend too: is hitting the fucking woodwork. Mm-hmm. I feel like every game had either a clipped crossbar mm-hmm. or a post hit in it this weekend as well. And this game was no exception. Like you said, one player hit the post twice. Yep, and finally scored, and it was a hell of a goal. And you're like, the minute that happened, it was like the switch turned on for Luton. Yep, and. The Cherries had a couple more chances, and they couldn't take advantage of them. Mm-hmm. And you just know you don't put Luton away. Well, Kaminsky played very well also, the, good, the goalkeeper. Right, he he but, stood on his head a bit. But the minute you don't put Luton away, they're going to come back. Yeah. They're going to come back. They've scored. In the, the last time they haven't scored in the league is something ridiculous like November. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, minus the game against us on uh, on Thursday, right, right, was the uh, first game since like November that they hadn't scored in. So it's yeah. it's been a, a fair while. They've they've been giving it an honest go. The problem is that hasn't translated to a lot of wins, right? So this was a, a massive game for them, uh, especially was... because they traveled to the Etihad this coming weekend. So getting getting a result, especially when Forest did not, um, I, Bournemouth are pretty much out of it, but yeah. um, uh, especially because Forest didn't. Uh, that that's huge for them because and, they're still teetering right on the edge of relegation. Of, uh, of the relegation. Brentford's side. draw didn't help them. They're still in it. They're and, still in it a bit. But and, I, I think you know, I think actually Luton are only in the relegation zone on goal difference. Mm-hmm. That's it right now. So they're tied with Forest on points, which yep. is which is huge. Yeah, and and considering how much tougher the schedule just continues to get for Luton, this was one they had to win, and they won. And you could just, you could see it. like the You could see it on Carl match. Morris's face. When, it, it, he almost burst into tears uh, yeah, at I one mean, point. He's, he scored a hell of a goal. That was a great goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goal. absolutely was. Made, made a very hard play look very, very simple. Yeah. Running through, shugging, shooking off the, uh, the defender like that, and then very simply turning your foot in the air while the ball's coming from the air and just guiding it to that. Well, to he, that he, had, he had that movement to the left away from goal. That put the defender's body weight off and just a little nudge, mm-hmm. just that almost like a an offensive lineman trying to get through the defensive line, just mm-hmm. that kind of wrap, and 
completely in the clear. It was it was excellent movement by Morris uh, but for, still, for that goal. But then still had to finish. You got to have the composure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Either. You got to have the composure. Ball's coming in at pace. It's bouncing just before it got to him. Like mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. He made a good connection and, and and got it in. And then, like you said, when the whistle blew, it looked like he was about to cry. Like you yeah. could you could tell how much Luton really needed that match. Oh, yeah. And certainly for for them too. And then not for nothing, the Cherries have been playing really fucking good lately. Like really, yeah, for real. really fucking good. Absolutely. Including being down three nothing to that Luton team. Yep. Like so you would have thought that they, you know, you could have let that get to you and you did not let it get to you. That's for darn sure. Yep. Spurs get a very professional win and it puts them back into the Champions League, which is which is good for them. But really, what we're kind of more talking about here is Forrest. And like you had just mentioned, they are safe on only goal differential. If there's any kind of a silver lining for them, they have a forward now consistently scoring. Yeah, with Chris, Chris, Wood. Chris Wood's fourth in a row, fourth game in a row, getting a goal. Yeah, but especially considering for how long none of them were scoring. Yep. To get that is to have someone who's actually scoring goals for you is massive. So then. This isn't a game you're expecting to win, but you are going to have games where you do think you can win, and you need your point man scoring goals. That's yes. for damn sure. 100%. Uh, Mario had himself a first 15, 20 minutes, didn't he? <laughs> Almost scored from 75 yards out. Yep. And then had an own goal. Oh, he did score. Problem was, <laughs> is it goal. Net? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe this is going to be uh, TMO Werner's secret weapon, since every time <laughs> he shoots, it's off target. Mm-hmm. Just pass it into the six. If he can hit the six, which is a much larger then area than the, else than the net. In for him. Yeah, because this is like the second or third assist, technically, in his last two or three games. Yeah. And I think his second forced own goal as well. Agreed. So, well done, Agreed. man. One more little uh, shout to um, Tottenham here as well. They're currently now in fourth, but let's not forget, in their last seven... They still have to play all of the top three. Yep. And two got of those each are one on us. the road. No, one. One. Okay. Us and cities have to go to Tottenham. Got it. But they go to Anfield. Okay. Got yep. it. Got it. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's absolutely fucking massive. They they're going to be somehow going to be the kingmakers this season. Or not. They could roll mm-hmm. over and die in all three games. Who knows? Uh but they very they very seriously could be uh the kingmakers this season. Um the other thing I wanted to spare a, a thought for here is how lucky Vicario was. Mm-hmm. Decent save. Um, I can't remember who had the initial shot came in from, but the, the rebound fell right at Chris Wood's feet. Did you see how hard he struck that ball and mm-hmm. struck that post? Mm-hmm. Had he got a hand to it, he dove for it. Right. Had he got a hand, it ended up, like I said, hitting the post. But had he dove for it, he could have dislocated his elbow. He could have dislocated his shoulder. If it hit him in the head, it might have killed him. Broke his wrist. If, <laughs> that Chris Wood struck that. He was like, you will fucking die now. <laughs> and just unleashed a, a, a strike Dude, that is ridiculous. It was a heck of a hit. That's I know. And it, I mean, I'm surprised. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't leave a crack in the goalpost. Yeah. All right. Well, on to Everton. And uh, what, Mel, what are you doing? Getting your shot ready. Oh, no, no. Hey, Mel. We won. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Everton is finally won in 2024. Hey. Really? Hey. Yeah. For the first time since the last time they played Burnley. <laughs> <laughs> that was their last win in mid-December. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we actually won a fucking so, game. I- Honestly, Mel, we should probably pour a shot of alert for ourselves because when Everton wins, we all lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin now scoring in back to back matches, did, uh, and neither were great. We're great. <laughs> but, but, but you know what? They count, and when you're a striker on a terrible, uh, scoreless streak, what you need is a little run and a little luck. And I can say this much. Watching him go into the second half, started kind of just missing a couple of balls, like getting in the box, getting opportunities. Had one that um, um, Murk Merch made a real good save on. Then he had one that he cut into the box, beat three defenders, and put it wide to the left, but got a foot on it. Got you know, it's like it's amazing what happens when you put a couple balls in the back of the net. Suddenly that confidence starts to come back. Suddenly you start to feel like you're doing something. That's you it. know, and. Uh, yeah, some people kind of gave a little guff about it, and it was just like, 
yeah, it was a shitty goal, but it doesn't mean it just doesn't well, he, jumpstart he, one's confidence he, just he the same. Did, he did mean to block the pass. Yeah. And that's an option. Danny Welbeck did it against Watford, remember? Absolutely. That might have been a bomb yang. Either yeah. way, it doesn't matter. Uh, a few years back. But that's that's why you press the goalkeepers for this to happen. Mm-hmm. If that ball deflected, you know, three feet to the left, he still would have been in prime position to react to it. Right. The goalkeeper's in full-on panic mode Yeah. at that point after having done that. So Absolutely. So DCL would have been in pole position to get to that ball first, also regardless. Not, like, not, not the first time he did this. Uh, the year of COVID, right before you and I went over, that game against Manchester United, the one where uh, uh, um, Gilfie Sigurdsson got called for offside. Laying on the ground, right, yeah. Which we'll get into another distracted uh goalkeeper quote unquote as well and uh, oh so that happened yeah. too but um the goal that was scored for everton was dcl deflecting a de gea pass because uh-huh. he jump he hustles and gets in front of balls yeah. that's what he does man that's right <laughs> he gets it i know that one made you giggle <laughs> i will say the following <laughs> burnley has been playing fairly well as of late like they're getting points this was burnley's chance if they really wanted to be in the discussion, this was their chance, and frankly, they laid a fucking egg. They did not look good. They did. They didn't look great. They, Pickford needed to make a few saves, which is how, even though DCL's pressing got them their goal, mm-hmm. Pickford still ended up man of the match. Mm-hmm. I think in this one as well, didn't he? No, it was DCL. Oh, it was DCL? Yeah. Okay. Would you? T- oh, it was in the Newcastle game that Pickford mm-hmm. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Um. You know, old, old short arms. You got the man of the old match. Old T-Rex. At, at St. James's Park. Uh, d- did you notice that the, the ref seemed to be in poor positions in a lot of the game? Yeah. It, it looked like he was scurrying out of the way of the ball a lot. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I well, found I mean, some of the positions he took up were strange. Like, he even followed, at one point, he followed a play into the box and then had to run out of the way as an Everton player was approaching to shoot. Yeah. Like, I've never seen a referee chase a play into the box. They always stop around 20 yards out because they can still see everything. Uh, there, there was a few things that are it's fucking that, weird, man, that are worth kind of talking about. Like the red card that was given on the foul on McNeil. It was all the way up at midfield. Yes, it was the last defender, mm-hmm. but uh, oh, I'm at midfield. But it was all right. it was also yeah. studs up. Right. I mean, it, it wasn't but a then, good tackle, but then turn around later in the game when uh, Beto is straight away through on goal and it was outside the box. That was a fucking dive. And it was outside the box is why they didn't rate it, but he still pushed him. That was he a fucking pushed, dive. He fucking pushed him. That was a dive. And, and, then, and then you come to also, like, James Gardner cutting across in the center of the box, gets kicked right in the shin, goes so down. What I, like, I equate the Beto one, I think they got that right, and mm-hmm. here's why. Okay. Right? I equate that because the same thing that we said now – this may dampen my argument. It probably should have been called. Mm-hmm. But um, I equate this to essentially the same thing that Anthony Gordon did a week or two ago, whatever mm-hmm. it was, winning the two penalties against West Ham. Right. Because I should be allowed to run in my lane, right? You mm-hmm. can't If you cut across me, that's your fault, not my fault, right? He just was running straight back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? had the ball at his feet. You, yeah, but if I'm running straight line. back, you cut across me. You got in my way. It should be a fa- You obstructed me. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say. That's my opinion. It's the same thing as Gordon. I feel bad for, for what's his name? Cow, um, uh, the plug used to play for Leeds. A brain fart. <sighs> Center midfielder that gave away the first penalty kicking, and Gordon had just stuck his oh, foot out. Um, yeah, your boy. Uh, why am I now forgetting his name? Oh my God, I'm Almighty! For the Phillips, Calvin, Calvin Phillips. Phillips. Thank you, Shore Billy. Yeah. With the save. Out. Thank you, but, Shore Billy. I'm just so, waiting for the lag to go in the chats. That yeah. I knew they say so he have doesn't it. even know Gordon's there, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he he should be entitled to kick the fucking ball. That's what the game. That's the rules. Right. He could, you know what I'm saying? So, in like in basketball, for instance, if you cut across me. Right. As you're as I'm running, like I'm allowed my lane, I'm allowed to do normal activities. And I don't think that uh, the uh, Burnley defender took Beto out or or, I don't know. But for me, I felt like because the Gordons ones were called, even in that argument, I guess that one should have been called also per 
those rules. I just think the rules are shit. <laughs> I I think it didn't get called because someone had already gotten a red it had already card been sent for, off. Yeah, for it being probably. the last defender. Yes, and that shouldn't change the way you officiate. No, of game. course not. You know, but and, it always, it does. And and I'm starting to see with I mean, how many how many in City Arsenal last week how many fouls should have been cards i counted at least six right he kept his cards in his pocket so but i also i also am starting to see a lot of var where it's like they're not even looking at certain things like it's yeah. just just not even being looked at or or in the case of we'll we'll talk in the next segment with the northwest northwest derby like just things aren't always being looked at. Yes, producer Mel. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Sure, right. shoot. Uh, what is the difference, this is from Christian, what is the difference between a professional foul and a cynical foul? Um, They're pretty much the same thing, yeah. honestly. Well, there most, you go, asked and answered. I think a cynical foul, there's a, there's a bit more gumption to it. Uh, well, a cynical foul typically comes right after you didn't get a call go your way, so you then just flat out clobber someone to be like, essentially, oh, Fuck you, ref. Like, yeah. I just got and fuck that player. I just got hacked Both. down there. Yeah. And okay, great. You're gonna give me a yellow card. But the good news is, is when you hand me that yellow card, I get to stand face to face with you and, and tell you tell exactly you. what I fucking <laughs> yeah. think. Uh, sure, Billy. It's mm -hmm. like porn. You know it when you see it. Yeah. <laughs> or, or as I also like to say, pulling a gram. <laughs> that was definitely your move. What? Porn? No. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the cynical foul. Getting getting whacked up the field and then just going down the field and clobbering someone. Yeah, somebody's just, gonna pay for this. Just yeah. so you can get in the ref's face and be like, You didn't call it down there. Yeah. <laughs> you just you it was just you you were like, I will take the card simply to get my point across. Oh yeah. And on, on more than one occasion I fouled somebody, helped them up and go, <laughs> It's his fault. <laughs> yeah, and pointing at their player that hit me. Yeah, no, yeah. that's why you're down. <laughs> that's yeah. why you're on the deck. I, you are on the deck for me to prove a point. But there, so there's also, you could say if it's very blatantly like, a, so like if if say that pullback on Anthony Gordon again a couple of weeks ago where he was clearly past him, they just reached out and horse collared him. Mm -hmm. That's cynical. Yeah, versus professional. Yeah, a professional they would have put him on the ground. Kind of like you would have wrapped an arm around yeah, him and kind of both you bit, would have kind of fell to the ground. Yeah. It wouldn't have been and it would have a been a hard bit, hit. It would have been a little bit of a closer to the ball, like all that kind of. It <laughs> wouldn't have been a fully, he was by me and I reached yeah. out and horse collared him. Yeah, I So I that, clearly, there, there's a difference. I clearly have to foul you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I can't let you get away with yeah. this play versus... Nah, I need to hurt somebody. I need, real somebody's quick. gonna pay for what just happened. Yeah, yeah. I gotta put Very a crack on so. someone. So uh, Everton now sit four points. Nope, wait, just got deducted another two fucking points today. Yeah, hundred percent they <laughs> did. I, d I did want to make mention also. I didn't watch this game for the same reason you didn't watch mine. Right, was because I know you watched it right. and I didn't have to see it. But as I'm looking at the scores, getting ready to sit down and watch highlights and stuff, and, and put my notes together and do things, I just wrote down Everton won, Burnley nil. No. I'm sure this was a barn burner. <laughs> Four yeah. whole shots on target, yeah, it was, and one yeah. of them wasn't even intentional per se. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. Yeah, it was. It was not. <laughs> it was not an entertaining match. No. Uh, so the uh, independent commission has come out today and has uh, docked Everton with another two points. Apparently, in that report, have also said that there is a further violation to be looked at later. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's insanity now it's just i now it's like the police academy movies the first three were funny and gave us material now yeah. you're just doing too much yeah, like, uh so when you win a game they deduct points yeah apparently that's how it works <laughs> so quit winning and they'll hit, hit, quit hitting you with fouls uh here uh, well, they we just have, ensure they're going on a streak we've discussed that this at nauseum and i and i don't really want to talk about anything more until we see what else happens to lester if anything happens to chelsea or city if there's a rule change because they want to protect city and chelsea who knows where this is all going there's too much conjecture to really talk about as an everton supporter this is what i know this is now done we know how many points we've been deducted. There's a chance there could be the appeal. Who fucking knows? But that's not until the season's over. So what Everton has to worry about right now is just all they have to worry about right now is winning the games that they have in front of them. And they play Brentford. They play Forest. 
and they play Sheffield in their own building, and then they play at Luton. Those are all teams around them. Win those games. Not even the Luton. You can lose the Luton game. Win those three games. I wouldn't earmark that one. Yeah. Win, win those three games, and you're fucking safe. It's that simple. So I would say win two, draw Luton, lose to Brentford. You're still safe. Yeah. Is what I say. Because Brentford, with a fully fit front line, that's mm-hmm. going to be a hard one. Well, and, now. and but but also, you then have next week at Chelsea, and we know they're perfectly capable yep. to fuck it right off. You and, don't happen to play Manchester United again, do you? Because no. that, that's a big guaranteed point. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we also know we play, we do play Liverpool in the Merseyside Derby in our building, and that is records are out the fucking window on that, right? We are very prone to tying them in our building on a regular basis. But what it is now, the points have been laid out. It is what it is. Worry about fucking getting the points you need. You aren't in the relegation zone right now. After being docked eight fucking points this season. That says a lot about the fucking teams below you. 100%. It was the third meeting of the Northwest Derby. And while it only had brief moments of excitement, it certainly affected the title hunt. Liverpool 2, Manchester United 2. Uh, it was clear, good old, uh, I have it here too, Mel, ETH, that means Eric Ten Hag, was going to play defense and counter, and that was it. Yeah, so for Arsenal and City supporters, obviously, that first half was less than ideal with the tepid shot Manchester United performance. That mm-hmm. was, uh, if you want to call it a performance, I... I call it the first 10 minutes at homecoming freshman year (laughs) is what it seemed like. It's like, do we dance with them or not? Do we go talk to them? What do we do? We're all, we're all going to sit over here and talk with our boys. Yeah. We're just going to go lean against the wall and drink fruit punch. And it's going to be the little tiny nerdy kids going to go up to like the tallest fucking girl and ask her to dance. And then we're all going to go, Oh, I guess we can ask girls to dance. Well, that's, that's Sam walking across that divide. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's how it used to go. Heard. Uh, but it, it was also kind of, a sleepy performance it was a sloppy performance um in that first half for manchester united it, it almost i compared it to a, a sleepy toddler wandering into their parents room <laughs> it's just like wandering around not really knowing what's going yep. on somehow not hitting their head on the door jam like yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> they managed to open the door even though they can't see right miraculously <laughs> somehow end up between the two of you yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. it's like you know it was one of those things they didn't even muster an attempt toward goal let alone I'm sorry, they didn't even muster an attempt towards the 18-yard box, let alone on goal. Right, exactly. <laughs> or near the goal, or take a shot and went out for a throw-in. Nothing. <laughs> they did nothing. Yeah. They did absolutely fuck all. And they were very lucky that it was only 1-0 going into halftime. Yeah. Um, but what a fucking finish from Luis Diaz. Mm-hmm. That flick on was a bit behind him, um, and he had to adjust and, and improvise, obviously, into that scissor kick, and it was it was absolutely fantastic, um, uh, that, that opener. But obviously, us in city got a bit nervous. Our yeah. little uh, our supporters groups were were kind of sharing that moment of fuck. What now? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. halftime. And here's the thing: Liverpool had all the chances in oh, the yeah. world, and they should have been all six nil up. The chances in the world, they should be should have been demolishing United. And next thing you know, midway through the second half, they find themselves fucking down. Yeah. But it's all about that first goal because that changes <clears throat> Liverpool's entire body language. Um, and I really did actually feel bad for Kwanzaa, mm-hmm. the, the young center back, because he's young. Right. He, it's obviously a big occasion. That's a huge derby. Um, you know how uh, Juventus and Inter in Italy are known as the Derby d'Italia, the, mm-hmm. the, the Italian derby, because right. those are the two most successful clubs in Italy. Um, this is essentially that for England. This right. is the of derby inglaterra yeah yeah okay. yeah um <laughs> if you have to say you know i didn't vote for brexit just saying uh, <laughs> <laughs> well you're also not an english citizen <laughs> well fair fair <laughs> true republic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they um so obviously it's a big occasion and that big occasion got to him he had kelleher coming out of the goal to accept a back pass that he didn't even attempt to look at him for Right, mm-hmm. and then uh, proceeds to just pass the ball straight to Bruno Fernandes, mm-hmm. uh, who from his own center circle struck that very bad ball um, first time, and 
it was actually a brilliant finish. He he didn't clip it too high, but it was high enough Kelleher couldn't get to it. He did um, uh, slice across it, but put it far enough left that it remained on target, which is what Mario didn't do in the Forest game. Uh, obviously, uh, with his 75-yarder, he cut across it uh, way too far with mm-hmm. his left foot, and it yep. curved wide. Um, but it, it was just a wonderful finish. And then, obviously, um, that, that second goal, it, it was it was just turned the entire tie on its head. But it was that first when you saw Liverpool's <clears throat> players just their, their shoulders drop, their heads oh, yeah. went, their chins went down. And um, now they had a couple of chances here or there. Uh you know the the game kind of started to ebb and flow, but you could tell the kind of the wind was sucked out of Liverpool's sails at that you point. You honestly started as I was watching the end of the match. I'm like, United's gonna hold on to this. I thought shit. they were too. I lost ten whole dollars mm. betting on the correct score, two one. <clears throat> Great, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Kobe Maynou with a one of the goals of the season. Yeah. Um, that that swivel and, and hit, and you couldn't have held. It was like Ronaldinho against England in the World Cup that time. Mm-hmm. You couldn't have held the ball any better in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still a shame David Seaman was in goal for that. But <laughs> lovely to s- remind myself of the ponytail flying through the air. <laughs> actually, <Hurt. laughs> old safe hands. Uh, but yeah, now Kobe Maynou's goal was was brilliant, and there's there's a big talk of him. Uh, to make sure Jude Bellingham remains further forward to get him to be the one to start next to Declan Rice in the Euros for uh oh very as, good as the uh, kind of pivot and Declan Rice be the more defensive minded player so um I don't know what what they're going to do I think he probably on the back of some of these recent United performances he's been their best player hands down oh Kobe god yes. I think he will actually make the Euro squad yeah. um to be fair to him I think he'll probably take Calvin Phillips's uh spot yeah don't disagree that with that thought um, but yeah, no, uh, very well. And then obviously Aaron Wambasaka, a little rush of blood to the head. Harvey Elliott's going nowhere, in my opinion. He's mm-hmm. actually well poised to to continue to defend him. Yeah, you didn't need as to go he's down. Run, he didn't need to go to ground, but he does love going to ground. And I think part of the stupidity of it is he is statistically one of the best one on one defenders in the league. So Aaron Wambasaka, there's no reason to go down there, <clears throat> but he does regularly finish kind of near the top of slide tackle statistics so he mm-hmm. likes going to ground and sliding in um but on again on this occasion in this atmosphere with that referee what are you doing you're giving him a decision to make whether or not he fouled him properly you put yourself in a position to give the ref a decision and the and he did interesting that var just immediately agreed with the decision and didn't take a look at it because upon further review he didn't touch him Meh. He didn't touch him. I don't know. Now, I, I thought it was now, a pen. I'm I'm don't care, right? Ultimately, but Liverpool been bitching and moaning, especially since that Tottenham game. They just got gave in a get get out because you watch the replay. He the first leg is already well over top of him, over top of his lead leg, and his second leg literally jumps right over top of it. Like he does not touch him he doesn't touch him it's hairline it's close but he don't touch him yeah all right al but it's fine liverpool drop points we're in the driver's seat i don't care precisely with our goal differential if we went out we win the league and that draw finds liverpool sitting in second place on goal differential like you said (laughs) Fuckers, (laughs) Fuckers, <laughs> it get you. You're all ready to be all excited. Gotcha, bitches. Got too much. Uh, I know. Got too much smoking. Deep in the lungs. Um, <coughs> yeah. So uh, our our game was a, a bit of a. Uh, are we going to ours yet? No, no. We're about oh, to. to. We, oh, we got to go, go to Oso. Oh, that happened because that's where I put it. Cause, that's right. Because I, I mean, hey, Mr. Graham, it, City and Arsenal won. That's what they're supposed to do. Or maybe Oso oh, that happened. Running out the rest of the league, and oh, so that happened. Man City 4, Palace 2, Arsenal 3, Brighton 0, Villa 3, Brentford 3, Newcastle 1, Fulham 0, West Ham 2, Wolverhampton 1, Sheffield 2, Chelsea 2. Um, So, Palace scored the first and the last goal. Problem? City scored four in the middle. <laughs> the, yeah. 
The, so the issue, obviously, with the first goal is it scored it way too early. Oh, yeah. They scored it way too early. Gave them, there was, gave them something to get angry n- about. Nothing to make City sweat. There was nothing. It, when that went in, I was like, this is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> You're My like, first well. thought was like, well, there goes Palace's chances right there. <laughs> it was like, if they don't get another one in the next 12 seconds, they're fucked. They are and done they for. Didn't. Nope. Uh, because the only uh, better strike this weekend than Kobe Maynou's goal was Kevin De Bruyne's opener. Oh, jeez. It was the exact same thing, but a little further out. <laughs> yep. Fucking hell, what a strike that was. Uh, he also had another peach later from a Rodri knockdown, which was a a, a, a perfect little layoff. And um, obviously, a, uh, you know what? I did it on my right foot already. I'll do it on yeah, my left this I'm time. I'm doing my left Man. this time. Huh. Um, but it, it was just, I mean, utter domination for 90% of the game, minus those two counterattacks, really. Uh, I will say the one To good- the point where Ortega did a Cruyff turn to evade one of the palace strikers <laughs> yeah. and it came off yeah fuck uh the one thing that benefits you and then we're going right into your game is that they did score at the end because instead of being a plus three it's, it's now only a plus, a plus two, two yeah, it's and, huge. and honestly every little fucking goal now 100%. is going to that, count that goal difference was like an extra goal man oh, like like absolutely. an extra point rather absolutely is the case and that's, and that's why like trossard's goal which uh, you know adding that third is huge yeah is agreed. another plus three and um so with that honestly professional win for you guys like it was exactly what you were supposed to fucking so do the, so i said the same thing about the Luton game it was a very professional win albeit mm-hmm. kind of sloppy right because right. it was mostly second teamers mm-hmm. this is what the first team does during a professional win it's a bit more concise a bit more put together yeah it was it was just a, a bit more grown up of a performance well and frankly uh, the building the you haven't won in in a while well, so it, a three nothing win is a good convincing win considering yeah. you don't win in that building it's a tricky game and we're we caught brighton at a good point for us mm-hmm. Um, because they've been terribly inconsistent over the last, I don't know, month yeah. and a half. Yeah, Brighton sliding. So. Brighton sliding. Um, they're probably they're just about out of the European discussion now. Regrettably for them, but yeah, that's where they're starting to sit. But they, you know, they they played all right. Actually, there was there was a couple of chances they had that, that made me a bit nervous, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Um, but obviously, Saka got the opener for in somewhat controversial circumstances. So uh, the defender, I can't remember who it was, uh, did kind of get a stud to the ball. Here's what I say about this. And as a defender, it's a little bit of a travesty. Yes, the the old days are over. Yeah, them get called now. Those follow-throughs get called all the time, regardless of whether or not a player wins the ball. Mm-hmm. That's how it goes. Um, is it a bit of a shame? Yeah. But them's the rules now, <laughs> and it benefits me, so I have a lot less sympathy for that. <laughs> I uh, my my counter argument to continue with what I've been saying, I find it very interesting that that one gets really scrutinized and looked at, but the Elliot one doesn't get looked at at all. Like it just but for that's me, because, it's that's to feel... because we're unfashionable. Yeah, As, while Jurgen Klopp is still in a position because he's so well liked by the media, Pep Guardiola the same. Arteta is not part of the boys' club yet. That's okay. how it goes. We're make, unf- we're unfairly looked at. <laughs> make, make whatever excuse you want. There. I'm telling you, yeah. go go listen to any of the talk sport stuff. It's all when Jurgen Klopp runs down the touchline and knee slides in the center circle and does all those things. It's endearing. I was gonna say runs we, into uh, the when, center circle during a live game and jumps up and down joyously with his goalkeeper. It's endearing. When Arsenal celebrate like that, oh, it's over celebration. This is just a game against Luton. It was a four three thriller mm. that we won in stoppage time. Yeah, Odegaard. Uh, that other game was paying, uh, you know, kind of a compliment to the club photographer uh, who's been there for thirty years and taking pictures of him for a change right. after a massive home win. The win over against Liverpool. Liverpool. So, but we're over celebrating. We're those. They should keep their hands to themselves. Fuck you, bro. Like. Just enjoy it. My my thing, it's not directed at any one team. It is consistently inconsistent complete, uh, completely across the league, depending on what re- a referee is on the VAR and what referee is not, on how long they look at something, when they look at something, if they look at it at all. You look at fouls where you go, well, that was a foul and it didn't even get looked at, or you look at, like, Calvert-Lewin sending off in the FA Cup where it's like, is that even a foul? But that got looked at and said it just so, so well, much inconsistency to to a he, here's the point. It's so much in, inconsistency to a device that is supposed to help make 
decisions made clearer and it has only made it more and more foggier. So the part of the problem is they are looking at things while the game's happening because stopping the game every 15 seconds to look at something they can't do. <clears throat> that being said, the announcers should do a better job of communicating, right? If it's a big decision and the ball goes out of play, they will stop the game and look at it. Right. But if possessions just turned over, right, or if a goal goes in and they look at all sides, nobody moves until that decision's made. Right. But in the instance where the ball stays in play, the referee doesn't stop the game. Right. He's being talked to. Right. But the announcers have to do a better job, I think. Because I think those things are, some of them are being looked at, but the announcers don't tell you. The, because we only know if they tell us. But we've also had announcers. thing doesn't come up on the screen unless the per ball's dead. Perfect example is the uh, the Bournemouth-Everton uh, game with uh, Tyler Adams fouling Dominic Calvert-Lewin. The color guy just went, wow, they didn't even look at it? Like, he said that aloud on yeah, air. Yeah, like, no, they that, didn't even look at it? Like, right, but I think that happens far less than you think it does, okay. is what I'm saying. Fair, fair. But that's the... Because the announcers have to bring that to the table, and they don't. Because right. unless the game is stopped, that VAR thing doesn't come up on the screen. Right. I, I myself, personally, I am hearing an, I'm hearing more commentators saying, wow, they didn't look at that a lot. I hear them saying that a lot. And for me... Uh, fair enough. Maybe for I'm me, just not... It's just, and it's not even like a, you know, they're out to get Everton or they're trying to make sure Liverpool wins the league or anything in that regards. For me, it is, it's so fucking inconsistent that you can't do a connect the dots and make up a conspiracy theory. It's all over the place and it's rampantly wrong a lot of times for something that is, again, supposed to make it a clearer decision and all it's done is made it fuzzier and the rest of the world seems to get it right, and England seems to, like, fuck it intentionally off. Yeah. fuck it off. So I, I think this is the global leftist elites trying to distract from Diddy's diddling. Sattery, 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 Allegedly. Sattery, <laughs> sure, sure, sure thing, sure thing, Samuel Graham Show. Those fucking lizard um, people. Uh, but, yep, gu gunners find themselves <laughs> now on top of the league. Yeah. We do, and it's a lovely place to be in. I'm feeling great, feeling good, loving life, looking good. Come on. So Villa go up to up, go up to nothing. Seem to be cruising right along. Everything, no problem. We're nothing to see here. We're ready to go. Uh, B score three on it, sir. <laughs> honestly, Villa for ten minutes had what I like to call a Taylor Twombly. <laughs> <laughs> just had a wee stroke for about 10 minutes. Well, that would be and Taylor forgot. Thompson. Cause oh, Twombly Chris just, didn't have the stroke. He was, That's right. Taylor had to, I thought they both had one. No, it's just maybe, Taylor. Maybe That's you right. just had a stroke. <laughs> Could be. I'm going all haywire and shit. <laughs> maybe I'll get good at memes now. <laughs> <laughs> because for 10 minutes, it seemed like Villa just forgot how to play football for a second. No I don't shit. know what was going on there. And then, oh! We're actually quite good. Oh. And then remembered to pass it, just give it to Ollie. I just, I just hear <laughs> Mel out of the office because my game's going on. I'm in the living room and she's in there just, fuck, what the, <laughs> come on, fuck. I'm just screaming at the top of her lungs well, the TV. There was a good, I don't know, 20 minutes where all we're doing it is hacking it at the goal, right in front of the goal. And for some reason, they just couldn't get it in. Yeah. And I just, very, very weird, odd game. Um, Good on the bees to show some resiliency. Take the lead. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> unfortunately, by the way, uh -huh. I've had everything but a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. That's my fault. That's my fault. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, you got, maybe you got to ask that special someone in your life to, you know, give you that joke. Wait, <laughs> wait, more on injury time. <laughs> and now a word from Dorito Spicy Nacho. <laughs> um, so what I what I thought about this, and th this is where you said earlier, Brentford being the, like in mm -hmm. at home at Goodison, you need to worry about this. The... And Buemo, those first few games back from injury, hasn't looked very good. Mm -hmm. His goal was the best of the lot for me mm -hmm. in those three for Brentford. The way that he started his run, the ball was played in kind of a fucked up way behind him. The, he adjusted, kept his eyes on it, and was able to pull this this wonder, this wonderful, wonderfully improvised volley out of his locker. Mm -hmm. Almost Willie Mays-esque, you know, over-the-shoulder kind of thing. Um I think you need to worry 
Uh, Alex, because that that front three is what Brentford's been missing all season, <laughs> mm -hmm. and now it looks like they're firing on 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 all cylinders. Now their defense is still a bit all over the place, um, and which is what helped Everton beat them the first time right. was they just kind of sat back and but countered. Your defense hasn't exactly been very good either. <laughs> um, I'd like to remind <laughs> you again: the fifth lowest goals in the league, and also second in the league in fucking shutouts. They have given up some shitty goals over the past couple of weeks, but I completely have to fight that argument that you're telling me Everton is a bad defense when statistically they are not. All right. <laughs> it just, that debt you have to be called on. Yeah, but it just, feels yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. the league yeah. table doesn't lie. Yeah, because Sam's feelings I tell you everything <laughs> just you need to know. about the eye yeah. test. Right, right. And you know what their problem is? Is they can't fucking score goals. That they have only, the only team that has scored less goals than them is Sheffield. That's why they're at the bottom. And the eight points that, by the way, if we were going to be real petty, since you're going to be petty, if we're going to be real petty, <laughs> the, the Premier League wanted them docked a total of 17 points between their two violations. That was their recommendation to the independent uh I don't think they should Council. be allowed to make a recommendation. So, yeah, that I was their recommendation. Too. That's yeah. not very independent, is it? No. But anyway, back to Villa. I thought Villa showed great resiliency. Uh, what did, what did you we think? We didn't lose. No. Right. It was a very frustrating game. We should have played better. Uh, it was nice to see... Oh, was it Rodgers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, new kid, get a goal. Mm -hmm. I always like seeing the new kids get a goal. Uh, I like the confusion of the Spider-Man meme between Bailey and Watkins. Oh, the first goal. Did you Who score? Scored? Did I score? Did yeah. you score? Do it was, we it care? was almost like Kanza's. They were yeah. talking about same thing from uh, that cross that he totally meant to do shot thing. And <laughs> I was I was feeling pretty cocky at halftime. I thought this was going to be an easy game, and Brentford bought back. And I'm just I'm I'm glad that uh, not drinking this tonight. Yeah, yeah. no Malort Monday. How about that? And. Uh, the other key thing, too, is they may be outside of the Champions League spot now, but the run towards Again, the end of the right, season for Spurs is, is, is rough. You know, they, you know, in, Villa has a couple of tough ones. They got to play us this weekend. They got to play at uh, Arsenal <gasps> and, and then they get Liverpool at Douglas home. Louise. Let's that talk was, about that. That's, fucked a, up that's, shit. A, that's a huge yeah. two thing. minutes left. Seven minutes added on the clock. I think there's really only two, maybe two less than yeah. two minutes. I, I don't. It was a stupid mistake, and he knew he what he knew did. It. He Amir knew exactly. Oh, he, he knew what it. he did. He hit yeah. his face, you know. Oh, yeah. And did, uh, how did he get through that entire mm -hmm. game? He knew exactly what he did too. As soon as the referee yep. blew his whistle, he went, "Oh no!" And if he made it through, if he had made it through that game, everything washed. Well, right, but the tenth yellow. Yep. He's Got now it. suspended two games. Oh, it's not one. It's no, two. it's two. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. that includes yeah. us yeah. and the following game. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna find out just how valuable Douglas Louise is to so, us. We so that hurts. We'll be able to, to score with, from a corner again. We so, haven't played without him. Like he's I know. he's been the consistent. Except, our except whole for when he season. got that fifth card and you played without him once. So so that's then <laughs> essentially <laughs> five out of six games that they would have been without him again or Douglas Louise, which is tough. Uh, hey, but we got Guinea back. Fulham completely dominates and it's funny the higher ranked team the team with a better chance of europe in newcastle got the smash and grab yeah because uh newcastle are have four people to play for them now yeah and that's it yeah. <laughs> uh they were hurting it was bruno Guimaraes, uh obviously late on but fulham dominated the game from start to pretty much finished mm -hmm. um anthony gordon i think had a chance to do kind of sporadically throughout Isaac had a chance or two sporadically throughout but it was I, I think newcastle ended up with more shots on target but i never felt like they were dangerous at all right right i think it was very close i think it was five to four shots on target but it was it was a very great response for fulham in terms oh, of considering the game, yeah. considering what happened the game prior obviously um, but Muniz, who was on fucking fire, seems like the goals have dried up a bit. I mean, yeah. I, th I think he himself had five or six shots, none of which ended up on frame yeah. in this game. And there were chances fucking galore. Debravka made a couple of very <laughs> smart saves. Um, and the defense, you know, got in the way of a lot of stuff. And then there was a, a, a touch of Fulham being wasteful as well. So got two shout outs. I'll give one here and then I'll give one after West Ham and uh, Wolves. But the one here is to uh, our boy Jay, 
who said, uh, man of the match goes to Dubravka for faking an injury when there's a team full of injured players to get that get the game over the line for him. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, now, and, and, in terms of the smash and grab, right, <laughs> the, in, in England, it was commonly referred to as a stripey jumper job, right? So the stripey mm-hmm. jumper being the jailhouse costume, right, right. uniform costume. Mel, you infiltrated my brain with your activities off mic. Uh, <laughs> Newcastle already have the fucking stripes, man. It's mm-hmm. easy. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, exactly. They're, fu- they're fit for jail. They're right in. Uh, Wolves take the early lead on uh, lead on West Ham. And what I found very surprising about that first half was, I know that West Ham likes to play a defensive style, but you go down early, you're in the hunt for a European spot. And there really didn't seem to be much kind of impetus to West Ham in the first half. They were just no. like, okay, I mean, we'll eventually score. And I mean, they did, you know. I mean, it was, so West Ham had like two chances, I think, total in the opening, like mm-hmm. 20, 25 minutes or whatever it was. Uh, it was pretty much a very good start by Wolves, honestly. Yeah. Um, Pablo uh, Sarabia was just not getting on the end of things, mm-hmm. uh, really. And, and Fabianski, I thought, had a, had a pretty good game. Um, I know Smokey likes to call him Flappyonsky. <laughs> uh, you know, he is a bit older and kind of past it, but I, I thought he's been deputizing fairly well yeah. you know, over the last couple of seasons. Um, but uh, but yeah, ultimately West Ham get back in the game. So, I mean, it's helped by so Graham. Allow me a to, penalty as well. Uh, allow me to yeah, obviously the penalty, but allow me to let me just say the following to you, Sam. Not sure if you're aware of this, James Ward Prowse. Kind of good at set pieces. Very good at set pieces. Yeah, kind of just. Yeah. I mean, he might be good at them. Might be. He was aided by the wind in this one. Yeah. I'm going to put on my best Jurgen Klopp impression. <laughs> I mean, it looked like he meant it, and he said he essentially said that he meant it. I don't know if you heard his post match, but he said, "Yeah, goalkeepers hate when you try that," <laughs> <laughs> insinuating that he meant to put it on frame. Uh, but it, the way the ball flew in the air, it kind of looked like the wind Felt was going It was windy like crazy. People yeah. love when I talk about the wind, but it was windy, and it's not good for football. And so we had, they had really to to work hard. Yeah. <laughs> kind of windy. Not good for football. Also, but two perfect penalties. Oh, yeah. Sarabia's penalty was brilliant. Kissed off the post. <clears> and then, um, uh, obviously, uh, Paqueta did not send Sa the wrong way, but hit it with the, uh, enough panache that it got past him. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if anybody noticed. No look, pen. Really? He hit it with his left foot to the right from his angle. Hit it with his left foot to the right side while looking left. Holy shit! It's a no look pen. Wow! Something only an overly arrogant Brazilian could pull off. <laughs> I love it. It's fucking brilliant. He's uh, like, oh, okay, you Spanish twat you put it off the post gotcha i'm not even gonna look at this and i'm gonna put oh, it past your keeper see i almost thought we this had the title of the show and five. Then... this is why we won five and you've won two so i first thought one, the, the just I, one i really thought the first title of the show could be uh darby day anglata you know but now uh what was that a uh um brazilian an overly confident brazilian <laughs> like, yeah, an overly confident brazilian yeah. Yeah. just yeah i we, think it's an overly, overly arrogant, arrogant yeah. overly <laughs> arrogant brazilian those are two great show titles right the there my friend no look pen and Spot. then of course it comes down to the end uh, it looks like uh uh wolves have tied it up but nope offsides for distracting yeah. the keeper and being involved in the play i'm uh, he wasn't a sight line that's yeah. true that has been given multiple times over the last couple seasons you can't yeah. really argue with it yeah. if you the the angle that kills it for me is the one from behind the goal yeah and you can see fabianski and his body weight is already going the other way yeah there's no way he's getting to that anyway right even if he was in his pump yeah there's no way he's getting to that ball regardless yeah, he was already reading it wrong correct so I get it. I understand. At that point, it's a bit of a subjective decision whether or not he's really interfering with play since the ball mm-hmm. wasn't played at him to him. He didn't go for the ball. There's none of that stuff. It's whether or not he thinks that it affected the goalkeeper and his movement. Yeah. 
Didn't look like it did. Uh, not to me. Yeah, <laughs> didn't look but like I it did. But I can understand why it was given. It's just annoying, and it's a tough one because it's all. It was also Max Kilman's redemption yeah. after he thought he was Jose Saw for a brief moment. Yeah, <laughs> and reached out and uh, stopped that cross. Yep. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah. from Everson. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a weird. This happened a couple times in in a few games this weekend. Like for Mario for Forrest, this became the Emerson show for about six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> He had a couple of really good and scary things happen all at once, and then he ends up from left back on the right side crossing that ball in for Kelman, who who handled the ball obviously and won the Paqueta penalty. Right, just like where did he come all of a sudden? (laughs) What the hell is going on right now? So the second uh, uh, shout out to someone that uh, mentioned something uh, interesting would be to Shore Billy talking about how this league is now kind of broken down into little quadrants. Right, you obviously have the top three fighting. You have about four or five at the bottom fighting for survival. You have obviously the two teams in Villa and Spurs fighting for that last Champions League spot. Sixth, seventh, and eighth is only divided by two points now between Newcastle, West Ham, and Manchester United. It is also on a nice fucking edge because one of those teams ain't going to Europe. And that's a massive... So for West Ham, it's probably not killer because they already work on a thin budget already but that money would be nice but in the case of united or or newcastle especially newcastle detrimental if you're not in europe next year but remember this is the first year of that champions league change right so it is entirely possible i was listening to this the other day that like the top eight or nine can all qualify for europe Mm -hmm. depending on who wins what cups wins what competitions and all that kind of stuff the top eight or nine teams in England could all be in Europe at the same time. If the right set of circumstances happens, right? If, if half City of or the, Arsenal, essentially half of the fucking yeah. league could be in Europe. If City or Arsenal win, and then if Liverpool or West Ham win Europa, if it ends up being two two teams from England winning the both of those, that could correct. Happen. Yeah, yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. Which is what happened last year, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, that rule wasn't in place. Correct. Now, uh, finally. Chelsea just seem to not be able to get out of their own fucking way, man. It's it's really funny. But I think this was more a symptom of a young Chelsea team looking past an opponent. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um Sheffield in front of their own crowd more than they did last time under Wilder mm-hmm. are showing a bit of fight uh before they inevitably go down anyway. Um and this was no exception. Obviously, playing right to the final whistle because Ollie McBurney got that goal maybe ninety seconds before, right, right at the fucking death. injury time was supposed to be over. Yep. Um, but uh, you know, Metaweke with a fantastic strike uh, as well for Chelsea. I think there's some positives to take for Chelsea, but ultimately you got to look at it and go, it's the worst team in the league. This squad costs sixteen billion pounds. What are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Like and it should just be better, and it's just not, man. It, it it's gonna take time. I don't know that all the players are good enough, and they way overspent for everybody. It, yeah, it, I, it's a strange old thing Chelsea's got going on, man. And, and I, I don't really know what they're gonna do. And somehow, much like United being frauds, Chelsea's somehow in the top ten. I mean, do I need to start calling them? But aren't they tenth? Do I need to start calling them frauds too? Now nah, they're comfortably where they're supposed to be. Your money. <sighs> All right. <laughs> that was a big sigh. Yeah, so we didn't do any bets on Thursday, obviously, so I'm going to tell you where I'm at now. I am uh, now down $1,747 uh, after losing my bet on Monday uh, of last week. Uh, so, Sam, over to you. Um, here's the, the big Sam bet of the week brought to you by... Um, what's the... Uh, What's the spray for your taint? Gold, Gold bond. bond. Gold bond. <laughs> it tingles. Taylor Bond. <laughs> um, Arsenal won, but Spurs didn't, so I am now down three hundred and eighteen dollars. Big Sam's lock of the week. Graham, I'm glad you're sitting. Are you ready for this? Twenty five percent of the time, it works. hundred percent of the time, baby. What? <laughs> 
Holy <laughs> shit. 25% of the time. Like it works. Of it works 100% of the time. No, no decimal or anything. Just exactly 25%. Um, I'm going to take Brighton to beat Burnley and over two and a half total goals at uh, plus 162. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, safe. I think there's three goals there. Playing it safe. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm actually in the lead, and I'd like to finish in the black this season. Nice. And now it's time for our degenerate gambling friend, Pat's Pick It a Week. Brought to you by Pinnacle. Uh, dear gambling, I know we've been together for quite some time, but my feelings towards you have changed. In the last month, I've begun to go on a horrible losing streak in my addiction has reached new lows. Oh, no. I blame you for losing, and I've decided that something has to change. I'm leaving you because I just can't seem to win with you around. Gambling and winning is more important than gambling and losing. P.S. I provided one last losing bet to remember me by. I'm taking Manchester United over Bournemouth at plus 150. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, one last bet. Is that was, hit for and, Patty? And it was titled Losing Hurts. <laughs> Everybody hurts. Oh, no, shit. You don't say. I How think it's that? more like nobody knows. 75% of the time. The trouble I've seen. You're giving it to me too early. I like to right. folded, so... Mm -hmm. They know I'm not cheating. Oh, okay. By the way, I gave it to her right when she hit the button one time. She was like, well, why are you giving it to me that fucking qu late? What the hell? How do you I explain it? I never like, did that. Oh, I will go back and fucking, you know, I will go back. I have sound checked everything. and I know exactly what you did and when you did it. It's an only child thing. <laughs> don't, don't call him on his bluff. Anyway, can we not stomp all over my part? Sure. Please? Oh, sorry. Sam's bet. This is what everybody thinks is entertaining because it's not good gambling every single time. <laughs> Brentford over Sheffield United, uh, burn, uh, sorry, Brighton over Burnley, Manchester United or draw with uh, Bournemouth on a double chance, and Liverpool to beat Palace. Nine way parlay. And Arsenal to beat Villa. That's only five, I think. One, no, six because it was three, draw, win. four, five. Double chance. No, double chance is a singular bet. Okay, very good. So one bet plus five, five, six. So Get it the fuck together, Sam. I'm hoping this one actually does and I come through. Not good gambling. So just one bet. Yeah. It's one parlay, yes. What's that Thank mean? Thank you. All right. What is going on here? Nothing. I don't like G this. Give him the card. <laughs> what I don't it? remember where I put it's it. It's underneath the mat right there. No, no. Underneath oh, yeah, depth, that mat. Ah! <laughs> There you go. It's blank. I, Sam Houston, bet producer Mel one U.S. dollar that Graham will make two separate bets tonight because he he's a petty little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? Exactly. Because we didn't do one last week. <laughs> I should have. I was gonna actually bring. I had a whole thing written mm -hmm. nope. since I've been up since four a.m. Does yeah. not count. I had a, I'm fucking does tired too, but I still yeah. wrote a bet today. Yeah, yeah exactly. It does not count, Houston. Yeah. Him thinking about it and doing it two different things. I know. He respects the just, system. Just, just yeah, to because you. I'm also exhausted. and I still did my job. You know who uh, always shit on his segments. You know who always does their job? The chicken. The chicken. <laughs> Well, Kitty hit Arsenal, and she sits at 17 and 13. So this week, I gave Kitty Brentford hosting Sheffield. Mm. Now, Kitty showed me a video of her, Mick Foley, and her good friend, Jane Ferrari in Philly, ringside at WrestleMania this weekend. Wow, how about that? Now, we wonder if they were there for both nights. We all know that Jane is a huge Brentford supporter, and Mick loves Sheffield, so it looks like Kitty is picking a draw between the Bees and Dublin! Yeah, sounds about Mick it. Foley? Yeah, Mick it's Foley. Sheffield. Yeah, he's Makes Sheffield. Makes total sense. <laughs> I can't think of a more of a match made in heaven, honestly. <laughs> Do you know what is also a match made in heaven? What's that? Remembering to gamble illegally and responsibly. Very good. You're welcome. <laughs> I just was like, 
that super All easy right. right there. That is going to wrap underhanded. it. That is going to wrap it up. Mr. Graham, any parting words? Yeah, so there's a couple things I became aware of, uh, and then one very sad thing. Um, there is a professional Peruvian footballer um, whose name is a tribute, it would seem, to someone uh, that no one likes. Mm -hmm. His name is Osama Bin Laden. V I N. Jesus. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's got a brother named Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Legitimately. Jesus. What the fuck? <laughs> They're Peruvian. I have no idea. But I became aware of this last week, and it's despite all the obvious negative emotions and shit that you know our country has been through as a result of those two cunts. Right. It is quite funny. <laughs> There's, because he got asked about his name, and Osama bin Laden said something to the effect of, well, I ain't kill nobody. <laughs> Just because, you know, I, I know a guy in Peru named Hitler. <laughs> Fucking Peruvians. And that's a legit interview he gave, and he was like, yeah, you know, I mean, he was a bad guy, but, you know, this guy I know in Peru's not. <laughs> kind of thing. It was... Quite funny. Oh, South America. Um, by the way, Mick, uh, according to uh, uh, Smokey, Mick is a Sheffield because he a lad there once did the Mixer Sacco celebration. Nice. And now Sherbilly is questioning whether it was Sunderland and not Sheffield. Yeah. It was. Um, no, no, it is definitely uh, Sheffield because remember. Kitty the chicken does not fuck up. One, one of the few things uh, that we actually learned from our uh, good friend Nick, the Blade supporter. Um, and not necessarily a game, yeah. um, is that one of their players, oh, one of their ty players one time scored a goal and he pulled the sock out from his jock strap and did sock Ugh. out. It is also <laughs> entirely possible Nick was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, no, I, I'd, I'd err on the side of caution with that story. Um, How crusty was that sock? I, I, if you ask him again, he actually put it in the goalkeeper's mouth uh -huh. too. I I I looked it up to confirm that story. Was it Ollie McBurney that did it? No, no, it was because he seems like the type. No, no, it was while they were still down in the championship. Could have been a John Egan thing too. All right. And what else you got for us there? Uh, so the sad part, uh, the bad thing, um, is we should spare a thought, everyone, for Joe Kinnear. Mm -hmm. uh, was the Newcastle? Most of us in in our. Premier League experience would know him from uh, Newcastle, um, Newcastle United and managing them, but he was the longtime manager at Wimbledon and longtime Spurs player, actually quite good Spurs player. He was actually there the last time they won a trophy, mm -hmm. which I heard was in black and white uh, on the telly. Hey, hey we, anyway, we wouldn't want anybody to leave our clothes group. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, now Joe Kinnear uh, lost a battle with dementia uh, this um, this week. Uh, he was seventy seven, I think, um, but just a, a proper a proper football man. A uh, good guy um, all around and generally loved in the game uh, legitimately. And, uh, you know, an infectious kind of love for – it's almost like Neil Warnock, just kind of an infectious love for football in general. Mm -hmm. um, it was great of, of, of putting an arm around a player and, and getting the best out of him and, um, uh, you know, managed Wimbledon <laughs> in the Premier League, obviously, and, and, and then took over Newcastle United after someone was sacked. I don't remember which time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and handled them for the rest of the, uh, that particular season. But just an all-around good guy. Lost his battle with dementia, and uh, that sucks yeah. uh, really bad. So, um, you know, condolences, obviously, to his family from us here at the DU Football Show, and I uh, hope everybody has a chance to watch some old highlights from uh, back in the Spurs days um, if they still have that, you know, that that motion picture real because it was a long time ago all right well that... uh, i do also mm -hmm. yeah. uh, briefly have a, a kind of the week uh if i could uh indulge myself it's the people that uh have a problem with stopping uh <clears throat> games for um muslim players to eat something i believe he's calling out a spurs fan right now <laughs> it's a little absurd uh these people are are obviously well in shape and everything else and it takes fuel to run a body Aww. some of us are fueled by booze and hatred others weed and beer others weed and cider mm -hmm. <laughs> cider thank you beer actually come brings you to a screeching halt now <laughs> um but 
these athletes need calories and the sun's going down and the ball went out of play. So if a Muslim player needs to run over, get a drink of water and shove a banana in his mouth, what are you worried about? Yeah. They've been fasting all day. Football is supposed to be tolerant and inclusive. Uh, it's football is supposed to be for everybody. So whether it be, uh, uh, you know, touching other boys or needing to break your fast, yeah. I think we should just leave people alone and let them do what they fucking want and need to do. Why sure, is that Billy. so hard? It's a two-minute break for snack and water. Get over yourselves and respect that. Yeah. yeah. The sun's going down. Like, that's that's the <clears throat> moment. Now, I agree. If someone's on a fast break, up, oh, sun's down. Shh, no. Ball goes up, but that hasn't happened, has right. it? Ball goes out of play. Ball goes out of play. <laughs> Bang. Or... If we have like a three minute stretch, four minute stretch where the ball doesn't go out of play, but the goalkeeper's just diddling around his box with it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he blew the whistle then. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. No problem with that whatsoever. Right. It's not a goal scoring opportunity. It's not a fast break. It's not a, you know, anything. Right. It just the, these, these, they haven't eaten since six o'clock that morning before the sun came up. Let them put, a little, let, let them put a little bit of nutrition you in You try their being a professional athlete and not being able to drink water. Right. Right, not even water. Fuck. Remember that. Yeah, they've been put through their paces all day. A walk through in the morning. I'm mm -hmm. sure. A, a, you know, a lot of these teams do a walk around the neighborhood surrounding the stadium uh, as kind of a light warm up. Then their warm up. Mm -hmm. Then like all of these various things. You know, Jack Grealis. I'm sure. Not that he's being insensitive. He's just an idiot. Is I'm sure sitting away munching on a banana in the locker room. Do you think that dude's not hungry? Yeah. Precisely. Whoever's sitting next to him, you know what I mean? That so just stop being cunts about it. Just it's fine. Yep. It's fine. It's an orange <laughs> slice at halftime at your at your white baby's soccer game. Just leave it alone. Yep. Don't worry about it. Uh, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up, boys and girls. Next up is DU Does the EFL, where we're going to uh, catch up on the rest of English football. And, of course, following that will be injury time, where we're going to preview the weekend's action, talk about fantasy, and talk about how the beers that we've been drinking. Mr. Graham, should somebody want to find injury time, how do they go about doing that? It's very easy. It's patreon.com forward slash DU football show. Sign up to that one $5 tier. You get all the very cool extra content he just talked about. But remember, uh, as he said, the EFL show is free, and it's coming up next. And there is another very funny story from the championship that I found. Excellent. I look forward to hearing it. QPR and their mascot, which is, for some reason, a cat. Love it. Very good. Till next week, everybody. Good night. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right day, yay, the fucking Gooner Graham. Snow of a lord, but straight in shorts. Sam Grammy. Sam Graham. Don't you get mad Hit the fucking new button!